Hello friends, welcome to another video. Today's review is Fate, The Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. It is the third and final book of the Tearling trilogy. That They've got the sapphire on the cover and it's got like the, the village to... It's just a castle. It's just a castle inside the... I don't know if you can see that clearly. I got it from my library. I got the whole trilogy from my library. In less than a year, Kelsey Glynn has transformed from a gawky teenager into a powerful monarch as she has come into her own as the queen of the tearling. The headstrong visionary leader has also transformed her realm. In her quest to end corruption and restore justice, she has made many enemies, including the evil Red Queen, her fiercest rival, who has set her armies against the tear. To protect her people from a devastating invasion, Kelsey did the unthinkable. She gave herself and her magical sapphires to her enemy and named the mace, the trusted head of her queen's guard, as regent in her place. The mace will not rest until he and his men rescue their sovereign, imprisoned and imperiled in Mort Mesny. While they embark on this dangerous mission, Kelsey must unravel the secret of her own heritage and of the Tearling's past. Secrets with stakes far higher than she could ever have imagined. But a powerful new enemy stands in her way. Bolstered by her anger from the past and growing stronger by the day, he'll, oh, bolstered by anger from the past and growing stronger by the day, he'll stop at nothing to destroy anyone who challenges his claim. Now, as the suspenseful endgame begins, the fate of Queen Kelsey and of the Tearling itself will finally be revealed. So, the main characters, the whole book, again, is written in third person, and it jumps around from different characters. Again, there's a map at the beginning, which I always find super helpful when I get to it. They've got a little map of the kingdom there which I really like give you a nice view and the main part we're either in a new London or um, Demens the capital of well there's are other places obviously on the map they talk about some of the other little villages and towns as well and the mountains so it jumps around from different characters the main characters of course are Kelsey uh, the Fetch, who I've mentioned before, the Mace, who is her uh, head of the guard, uh, General Hall is her leader of her army, Barty and Carlin, Carling were her adoptive parents, Arliss is her treasurer, Marguerite and Andaly are her um, ladies-in-waiting, and Andaly, her daughters, sort of play a role. Her oldest daughter, Asa, has a pivotal role in this book for sure. Um, several of the guards, like Penn and uh, the father, Father Tyler from the church. Javel was the, one of the gate guards. He still plays a role in this book as well. Several of her other guards, and I could write them all down and list them all. They all have different roles to play, but... Um, so oh, I named the, like the most important ones, uh, the Red Queen of Cur of course, Queen of the Mort, um, and then the people from the past. And in this one, we jumped forward like in the second book, we were following Lily, and in the third one, Lily's still in it, but instead of following Lily, we're following Kate, who is uh, Dorian's daughter. So there's Lily, and Lily's sister Maddie. And then William Tear and Dorian is William Tear's second in command, and she is it's a girl, her name. I know is Dorian, but she's a girl. Uh, this then when we get into the book three, we're following the next generation. So Katie is Dorian's daughter, and then Ro and Gavin and Jonathan, who is uh, William Tear and Lily's son, are the four so Jonathan, Katie, Ro, Gavin are the four main um, teenagers in the next generation that we're following around. We see things from Katie's point of view, from, um, 
Kelsey's, from the Maces, from Asa's, from Father Tyler's, um, a few from Andalee's point of view, or ja and Javel, we see a lot from Javel's point of view as well, and a few from the Red Queen's point of view. Oh, I forgot, oh, I can't remember his name, there's a guard. He's the leader of the, I shouldn't say leader. He's her jailer, the Queen Kelsey's jailer. I'm trying to remember his name. I'm never gonna find it now. Anyway, he's kind of, they describe him as being kind of slow, like he's not um, the smartest, but he's smart enough to like do his job, like he's a very good guard, he understands when people talk to him, but he's just a little on the slow side, but like, I, he's, he's a hero. He plays an important role and he does some good things. I'm trying to see if I can find... find his name. Um, I'm not going to find it. I'm sorry, guys. Ewan. Ewan. E-W-E-N. Ewan. E Evan? I don't know. E-W-E-N. Anyway, he plays an important role. He definitely um, does some brave things. I, uh, he does some stuff in the second book too, to be honest. Anyway, okay. Again, no dragons. No dragons in the series at all. I'll eventually come across, I'll read definitely books with dragons. Um, I mean, Fourth Wing is on my list, so when I review that one, we know there's dragons in that. This one was definitely faster paced. I read it faster. It still jumps back between the past and the present multiple times. Um, a few twists, not serious plot twists, not like a big plot twist, but like little secrets. Like uh, we finally find out who Kelsey's father is. And when we get to that moment, you guess it right before she finds out. But like I had no clue right up until that point who her, who her father was. But after they say it, it's like, oh, of course, things like that. Um, right at the end, there's a few like, I can't believe it happened that way. Didn't give me overly strong emotions. I still really enjoyed reading it though. Like I found it a page turner. I didn't want to put it down. Um, I still compare it to, I can never remember the name of the book, Red Queen, Glass Sword, that sort of trilogy, that series, like the dystopian rulers trying to overthrow a crooked government. Although with this one, it's the alternate, or not the alternate, the neighboring kingdom that's the crooked government, and they're just, they're trying to fix it. The whole purpose of, the whole purpose of the story uh, William Tear wanted to come and start a new world and make a utopia, which we all know is a nice thought, but really, really freaking hard to do in reality. So, yeah. But they figure it out. Kelsey figures it out. Um... There is a nice little bit at the end that goes into like an afterword about what happens. So like you get a little bit of it afterward to, to know how things are going. Um, the ending is everything is wrapped up. All the loose ends are tied. 
it is satisfying where things are great, like they got the result they wanted, but it's also kind of sad. Um, and I really can't tell you without spoiling it, but I, um, I didn't love it as much as I'd like. It makes sense. I get it, but it's also kind of sad, but it, but it's happy at the same time. That is so confusing. I know if, um, you would like to know what I'm talking about, um, if you already know me, message me and I will spoil the book. I don't care or comment below. And when I see the comment, I will, um, I'll message you or find me on Instagram and message me. My Instagram is the same as my channel title, nerdy book chick, except with underscores. And I will spoil the ending for you if you want to give it a bit more of an explanation about what I mean. <laughs> I liked it. I did. Um, I don't know how she could have done it a little, like she could have done it a little differently. Anyway, happy and sad at the same time. The whole trilogy is wrapped up. All loose ends are done. I would give it a four out of five stars, mostly because of the ending. I can't give it a five out of five because the way it ended um, gives me mixed feelings. Definitely engaging, complex characters. You see their growth and their change, especially Kelsey. She changes and grows so much throughout the book. Um, not overly emotionally moving for me. Uh, but I can see it being emotionally moving for other people. There's definitely, um, to give you like the feels for, and, um, for the red queen. Oh God, I'm stumbling here. You Sympathy. That's the word I'm looking for. You get some sympathy. You feel sympathy for the red queen near the end. She's not, uh, you kind of understand her a little bit better if that makes sense. Anyway, four out of five stars. I'll give the whole series four out of five stars for the same reason, because of the ending. I do recommend them though. Great world building, great um, complex characters, great uh, political and intrigue and all that. And mixing the future with the past was very fascinating the way she did it. I thought it was very interesting. The Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. Start with The Queen of the Tearling if you want to read the books. I will put the links in the description box below for the other books in the series. And that's my review. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.